Hello everyone, this is I, Mr. Big T Anderson. Today we are doing Pegasus Galaxy Survival Guide. This is uh, Stargate Atlantis, I believe. A fandom from there. Uh, now, I don't know the Stargate fandoms. I know the Stargate. Uh, there's SG-1 and then there's Atlantis. This is Atlantis, I do know that. I have notes here. Save the day. But the reason I chose this one, and this was written by Head Chantel, uh, it actually feels like something you'd receive by someone trying to give you the 411 when you show up. And that's always a funny bit. And it kind of makes you look into the idiosyncrasies of the uh, work environment, so to speak. So, if you're new here, let's go over the rules. I am Schmucky Duck reading this. This is not my fan fiction. I did not write this. Head Chantel wrote this. There's going to be links down below for the author page as well as the story page. If you enjoyed it, please give a good review. Give some love through those pages. If you enjoyed my reading of it particularly, you can leave a comment here. Now, I do take suggestions for what kind of fandoms I should do next month. This month, we are doing Star Trek, Stargate, and Babylon 5, so uh, a lot of exploration going on. So... With that, this is the Pegasus Galaxy Survival Guide. Number one, Marines, if annoyed, may make your life living hell, but the scientists will make it unbearable. Trust me, no hot water or heating isn't fun. Number two, remember out here we are the aliens. So I strongly advise you not to show disrespect or disgust towards local customs. It can lead to all sorts of trouble and pain. 3. Trying to escape the infirmary is pointless. Your only reward is the big needle. 4. We never leave a man behind. 5. Remember, nothing stays secret around here for long. Gossip is practically our local religion. 6. Never make assumptions. I've lost count the amount of times we've gone to a planet that's supposed to be uninhabited only to wind up being attacked by irate natives, wraith, or genie. 7. Don't upset your Apollo or Dodless crew or whatever ship you have now, as they're the ones responsible for delivering supplies. If you do upset them, you'll still get your supplies, probably just not in the condition you would have liked. Remember that women on Atlantis talk during girls' poker night. Upsetting one will inv inevitably end up in upsetting them all. Marines and scientists are deadly when they conspire with each other. 9. Don't taunt Murphy. It's an excellent way to ensure a mission goes south fast. 10. Don't even think the phrases, how bad can it be? What could possibly go wrong? Or how can this get any worse? Because Pegasus will rise to the challenge every time. 11. Each team, and pilot, has their own jumper. Best to ask permission before entering it. Otherwise, it can turn nasty rather quickly. 12. If you're ATA positive, be careful what you touch. There have been countless in incidents, some humorous but mostly dangerous because of careless gene carriers. For evidence, see Dr. McKay's list. 13. Basic weapons training is essential. Knowing some basic combat is also helpful. Marines are always willing to help with this. 14. If you don't know how to swim, learn fast. Need I say it? You've been assigned to a floating city. 15. Volunteering for things off-world isn't a good idea. There have been a few expedition members unwittingly married. 16. Don't trade weapons or leave them off-world. I can't stress enough how annoying it gets being shot at by your own weapons. 17. Always have a plan B, as plan A usually fails, and a plan C is advisable. 18. We don't take alcohol off-world, only bring it back via trade agreement. If you want to know why, ask any of the original SG-1 members. 19. Diplomacy almost never hurt anyone. Honestly, it's probably the best way to go. 20. 
Crazy ideas are usually the ones that save the day. For evidence, see Brigadier General Lorne's list which contain ideas from Atlantis and the SGC. It's a good read. 21. Nothing is idiot proof. 22. Always listen to the locals. Their myths and legends come from somewhere. We stumbled across some rather scary and dangerous creatures over the years because we failed to do this. 23. Using the gate for anything other than visiting other planets will just give everyone a headache and create way too much paperwork. By that, I mean time travel and visiting alternate realities. 24. Remember, appearances can be deceptive. I have lost count of the times a bunch of seemingly friendly bunch of natives have turned out to be anything but. Genie, for example. 25. Listen when people shout duck and don't shout duck unless people need to. We all know the story about the boy who cried wolf. 26. When off-world, always keep a close eye on your gear. I direct you back to my comment about number 16. <clears throat> 27. Don't try to outdrink the locals. Many have tried, and many have ended up in the infirmary. 28. Don't trust the Wraith, apart from Todd. 29. If they're armed, don't try to be smart, cute, or mock them. The result isn't pretty. I have the scars to prove it. 30. Always respect your team. They're the ones who will have your back if things go pear-shaped. 31. Never mess with a scientist's coffee if you want to live. Probably a good idea to stay clear of Marines' coffees, too. 32. If you think you're being watched, you probably are, and it's generally not a good thing. 33. Befriend the cooks. Need I say more? 34. Never turn up late for duty. The person you're relieving won't be happy and will find a way to pay you back. 35. Take chocolate off world. It's useful for bribing children. This is particularly important if you're visiting M7G677, which is full of children. Chocolate is also useful for bribing your geek scientists, especially when trying to drag them away from something they're interested in. 36. Never break a promise you've made with Todd. It's how we gained his trust in the first place. For more details, read the file. It's not something I like to talk about. 37. Don't attempt to bribe the medical staff. If it didn't work for me and I'm the military commander, it won't work for you. They treat it as the same as tip 3. 38. If you're military, I suggest you befriend some geeks as they're the ones with the distilleries. Your military commander will know where to obtain the moonshine. If you stumble across an illegal still, please contact a military commander who will then sample the product to make sure it's good quality and not rocket fuel. In which case, they'll pretend they never knew about it. 40. Leaders, learn what makes your geek tick. Chances are you'll be the only one they listen to. 41. Unfortunately, paperwork has to be done. Procrastinating about it will only annoy the expedition leader. 42. Keep paperwork concise without omitting vital information. After all, your senior office generally wants to read it about as much as you want to write it. 43. Departmental meetings are mandatory. They're a good place to catch up with gossip and generally share thoughts and complaints. 44. Always assume wildlife is hostile despite its cute and or cuddly status. Think baby tigers. 45. All bets go through the chief gate technician. 46. Don't invite uninvited guests to Atlantis. Take them to the Alpha site. Reasons can be found in the Lucius file or alternatively known as the pheromone peddling shyster file. 47. Please be considerate in the corridors outside crew quarters. People on night shifts will be sleeping during the day. 48. It takes a lot of bullets to kill a wraith. I mean a lot. 49. C4 is not to be traded off-world. The results aren't pretty. That's not just what the natives can do with it. Lieutenant Colonel Cadman isn't pleased when annoyed. 50. Don't set fires inside. The amount of water the sprinklers produce isn't funny, nor is the sound of the fire alarm. 51. 
During unscheduled off-world activations, only heavily armed security personnel are allowed in the gate room, unless you have a death wish. 52. Turn electrical items such as lights and plugs off once you're finished with them. The ZPM isn't an unlimited power supply and you certainly don't want to be caught by Dr. McKay. Let's learn from our mistakes on Earth, guys. 53. Girls Poker Night is for girls only. You will receive no sympathy from Dr. Beckett should you disregard this rule. 54. Scientists, please inform everyone at least an hour prior to doing anything with the city's power and give an all clear message once you're done. Forewarned is forearmed. 55. Don't use the transporters while the geeks are messing with the power. Chances are you'll end somewhere miles away from where you wanted. 56. Always expect the unexpected. Remember, out here anything can and probably will happen. Kind of like Eureka. 57. Just because it happened to the SGC and SG doesn't mean it won't happen here. For example, see file on replicators. 58. The city's veterans tell you something, then listen. We've been here long enough to know what we're talking about. Most of the time. 59. Pulling pranks is fine, just not when the IOA are visiting. 60. Scientist ATA gene carriers are not human guinea pigs. It is seriously annoying being asked to switch things on all the time. 60. And that is the Pegasus Galaxy Survival Guide. You, So you would receive this as the 411 as you got your assignment to Atlantis, you dropped in, just so people uh, would help you along. It, it's kind of uh, like a welcoming gift. Don't screw up. And uh, I kind of like those. They kind of make me chuckle a little bit, and I had a lot of fun with this. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked it, link down below. Read it. Give the love. Have the love for the author. Give a review. Do something with it. So with that, thank you for joining me today. If you liked my channel, please subscribe. It makes me happier. And you know what? You guys have a good one. Ta-ta for now.